About a year ago now, I built a keyboard for myself, uh, which I designed for CAD, so I would map um, keyboard shortcuts in KiCad and other tools to individual keys uh, on the keyboard, so you didn't have to press weird combinations um, on your computer keyboard whilst you were doing whatever workflow you're in. Um, posted some photos on the internet, had a surprising amount of interest, and so I thought I would make a video of the most recent version, uh, what it is, how it works, uh, and how you can use it to improve your workflow. So you might be thinking it looks a little bit strange as a keyboard, it's only got 16 keys, it's got these two um, weird encoders at the top, and that's because it's not designed to be used, uh, or designed to be replacing your normal keyboard. Uh, it's to be designed to have individual um, shortcuts or macros mapped to these specific functions here, and so that instead of having to, say, use both your hands and move more around on the keyboard on the right to get the uh, certain setting in your tool that you're after, or press a key a lot of times to move up or down, uh, you can map these to these keys, um, and that way, let's say you wanted to drop a via in KiCad, instead of going Control shift v you could just tap one key. Or let's say you wanted to uh, zoom in or out, you could turn these knobs clockwise or anti-clockwise. Uh, you can also press them down, and so for example, that could set it to uh, zooming your board to the, the screen size. Um, I personally use them for changing the grid size um, and changing the track width uh, when I'm doing layout in KiCad, and that was the original reason. I designed this board, but since then I've found a bunch of other uses for it, uh, and it's extremely easy to program and to get things working with it. Another strange thing about this keyboard is that it's got four USB connectors on the back of it, uh, and that's because it's got a USB hub inside. So in this case, one of the connectors runs up to your computer, um, there's one which runs inside to the microcontroller that actually runs the keyboard, and the other three here run uh, out to your desk, so you can plug in your main keyboard, you could plug in your mouse, uh, USB sticks, SD cards, two-factor authentication keys, uh, even microcontrollers that you're working on programming. Um, and the best part is, you could plug in another macro pad and program this one from your macro pad. And I guess this is one's also got four connectors on it, so you could just keep on going for as, uh, as many macro pads as you have. And I can't believe I forgot to mention it earlier, but as uh, is required, it has a bunch of LEDs underneath, so you can make it do whatever you want. And here it is on my desk. So you can see this cable here runs off to my computer. I've got a memory stick, I've got a little RF signal generator I've been working on, and then I've got another cable which runs over to my main keyboard. So let me jump on the computer and I'll show you how you can configure the software to hit any macro key or run any piece of software that you'd like. So I've got the keyboard open here in KiCad, and I'll just quickly uh, kind of show the, the original way that I had planned on using this. Um, so let's say you're in here and we need to route um, a trace for this, we can go along here, and okay, that uh, that track's a little bit too thick, so there is a keyboard shortcut to change the uh, track size, but it's really awkward to hit, and so instead I've mapped it to the rotary encoder, and so I can just move around, say we're at uh, 0.25 of a millimeter, and then we can keep on uh, routing our board like that. Now let's say uh, this grid size we've got here um, which you can see up here, that's uh, way too small, the grid size for the work that we're doing right now. So let's say we want to increase that a little bit. Well, I have, oh, I went too far. Um, I have the other rotary encoder set up so I can just dial that grid size. Now that's probably a little bit too big, so we can go back down again uh, and continue doing our routing. You can also map other uh, keyboard shortcuts for anything that you'd like uh, into here. So for example, we can go high contrast, so this will go all of layer one, and then we can go down to layer four, now we can turn that off. Let's say we want to look at just this track here, which is row 2. Uh, so we, I've got a key set to highlight the net, and so it's going to highlight that net. Let's find something more interesting. Let's find the 5 volt line. Um, so you can see that's ever on this board that needs, uh, needs 5 volts. Now, there are obviously shortcuts in KiCad that you could hit, but A, I can't remember them, and B, it's much easier just to have the ones that I want right next to me uh, that I can hold my mouse in my right hand and I can hit the keys with my left hand. The nice thing about the way this keyboard is designed is that any key combination you can press with your hands or any mouse click you can do, you can program into the keyboard. Now, if you want to, you can hard code it into the keyboard, so the same key does the same thing every single time you press the key. But the nice thing about this is, is that uh, basically when I send a key from the keyboard, we wrap it uh, using a function key. So I normally use F23 or F24 because most people don't have that on their main keyboard. And then we run a script on the computer here that will pick up that it's uh, F F24 is being pressed. So it means it's coming from the macro keyboard, not the main keyboard. And then we can run logic on it. So in this uh, case here, I've got auto key up, um, which is the Linux software you use for it. Um, you can also use auto hotkey on Windows, which is a much nicer to use and it's probably the more common option. Um, there's also Carabiner or Carabiner on Mac, um, which someone has quite kindly uh, added in uh, support for our keyboard. So, um, but basically, 
The way that it works, uh, and I'll show you the other options later, uh, is that we basically see what window we've got open right now. So in this case here, it would read back auto key, otherwise it might read back PCB new if we're doing the layout like we were in KiCad, EE schema if we are doing the schematic capture, um, or Visual Studio Code if I'm doing some programming. And so in this case here, uh, we can see it's key four, so the top right hand key on the keyboard, uh, and it will do a bunch of different things. It will do redo uh, if we're laying out a circuit board. It will press the insert key, which duplicates uh, the last step you've done. Um, if we're doing the schematic capture or in Visual Studio Code, uh, it will debug or continue. So I've got the top row set out for uh, when I'm debugging, so I don't have to, I can't remember what keys it is on the main keyboard, but I can just press the keys uh, kind of across the row to go through each step of the debug phase. So here is the auto hotkey script, which is what you'll use if you're in Windows. Um, big thanks to Taron from Linus Tech Tips for this one. Um, I had a originally pretty janky implementation, but then I saw the work that he has done on it and I've stolen most of that, um, which means everything still works. It's just much nicer to work with. Um, so essentially, the way that the keyboard works, as you can see here, is that each of the keys and the encoders um, basically send different characters. Um, but before we send the character on the keyboard itself, it presses down F24, sends a character, then releases F24, and then this script here uh, picks up that it's been that case. And we can see here in this line, uh, that's where that happens. So it essentially goes, if F24 has been pressed, then we know to run this code. But in addition to that, we check um, what software is running. So in this case, it's KiCad for when it's in Windows. And then I have all of those hotkeys once again um, mapped in this script. And then we can go down, so you're in KiCad for that. Um, I don't use this too much in Windows uh, for any other applications. And so in this case here, I just have a generic well, if none of the above cases have been met, so if I'm anywhere except KiCad, I'm just going to run the below here, which in this case, um, we'll use the scroll wheel up and down, so I don't have to use my mouse, because uh, I have some RSI issues. You've got escape, you've got close tab when you're browsing Chrome and things like that. And then I've got all the volume up and down uh, controls in here. And you can alter this to your heart's content. Um, there's a lot more advanced stuff you can do, but this is kind of the basic side of things. So with all of this said, um, if something like this sounds interesting and you want one um, to have on your desk to help improve your workflow, jump onto the GitHub link which I'll put somewhere. Uh, it's got all the source files for the hardware, the firmware and the enclosure. It also has a bunch of documentation going through how to assemble it, um, how you can change the firmware and specifically things to look out for. Um, and the nice thing about it is because it's all open source, if this doesn't meet your needs out of the box, you can change it quite easily. So the first obvious one is altering all the software that I've just quickly shown there. Um, you can obviously do a lot more powerful things. I personally haven't had a need for it, but I'm sure that there are plenty of people out there that can extend on that quite well. Um, another nice thing about this is that the firmware which actually runs on the microcontroller, which is on the back there, I don't know if you can see the black rectangle, um, that's using a firmware called QMK or Quantum Mechanical Keyboard, uh, and it's a massive open source uh, keyboard firmware project that has a bunch of really interesting uh, things you can do to the board. So for example, double tapping a key you can send a different key compared to just single tapping it. Uh, you can also have different layers. So for example, on this, uh, when you double tap the bottom right hand key, it actually shifts to a completely different layer which controls the board. And so that one there will do all your LED control, whereas oh, and then you double tap it and you're back to the normal layer which will actually send off to the computer. Um, if you don't want to assemble this yourself, because there are a fair few parts on the back and it can be a bit of a pain, uh, at the time of recording, I do have some available for sale. Um, I did not expect to be in this position. I originally just built this for myself for the fun, but apparently the internet is pretty keen on them. Um, so there will be links somewhere on how you can get your hands on them. Um, in saying that, if you do have any questions or if you build your own and you can't get it to work, please let me know. Um, if you've got any additions to it or bug fixes, please submit pull requests or issues on GitHub. Um, this is a relatively new um, project and it'd be great to see a bunch of people out there using them uh, to improve their workflows and uh, better their day. So with that said, um, thanks for watching. Any questions fire in my way and I'll see you next time.